Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our liturgy. We will have a second collection after communion for the Diocesan Life and Justice Campaign. Please stand now as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we gather this morning to uh, celebrate the 20th weekend in ordinary time. As we gather as a community of faith, we pause to call to mind our sins, asking for the Lord's forgiveness and peace. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maidens. She calls from the heights out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here to the one who lacks understanding. She says, come eat of my food and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Taste and see 
the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste, Taste and see, see the goodness of the Lord. Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste, Taste and see, see the, the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard and from all his distress, he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. And do not get drunk on wine, in which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
A uh, reminder, our second collection this morning is for the Diocesan Life and Justice Campaign. It extends grant dollars to ministries throughout the diocese that promote justice and uh, the defense of life. Um, last year, uh, our parish gave 5% of all the funds that went out throughout the diocese uh, through this campaign. So thank you in advance for your support of this. It, it means a lot to the, the good work uh, that goes on here in our, our metropolitan area. So, uh, if you've been with us for uh, the month of August, you know that uh, we are working our way through five weeks of the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter. This is week four of five. And at the beginning of this enterprise, I invite everyone to be thinking about and asking themselves, what is the intention of Jesus in these five weeks? All right, intentions reveal the desires of our heart. What is it that we long for, yearn for? What is it that Jesus wants to express, wants us to have? And at the beginning, we realize that God clearly wants for us to eat, that of all the miraculous things that he does to address need and want, right? He, smears mud on the eyes of the blind, he sticks his fingers on the tongue or the ears of those who are deaf or mute, he simply says, take up your mat and walk. Jesus does miraculous things when it comes to need and want, except when it comes to hunger. God and salvation history does not do a workaround for hunger other than just provide food. You're hungry, I will provide you a meal rather than be filled or placing his hand on the belly of someone who's hungry and says, let there be food here. When there's hunger, God simply provides us something to eat. And what we've been seeing over the last few weeks is God wants to provide a meal for us himself. And we've been walking through what does this meal look like and how is it different than the other meals that God has provided over salvation history? And what we're ratcheting up is this meal is distinct. It's not simply a meal that comes down from heaven, like the experience of the Israelites in the desert during the Exodus experience. Flesh in the evening, bread in the morning that just showed up miraculously every day for their 40 years. But somehow this is different. Yes, it comes down from heaven, but the ingredients are different. Last week, we looked at what's the purpose of this meal that he's providing for us. It's to get us to the finish line. It's to get us to the mountain of God. It's to get us to the promised land. Or as Jesus talks about in the sixth chapter, it's to get us to heaven. That's the point, is that you and I might be raised up on the last day. God wants us to eat. He provides a meal himself. It is distinct from every other meal he has provided us. It gets us across the finish line. What is this meal comprised of? Well, Jesus has been intimating, and he'll become more explicit as we move through John's gospel, that he is God. That he's not one who simply comes from heaven like an angel, but he is one who was intimately with the Father, sent by the Father, in union with the Father, preoccupied with the will of the Father. I and the Father are one. And it's this one who says, essentially, I am God, talking to you right now, also says, I will give you my flesh and my blood to consume. This week, we get to the, the crux of the matter, the moment when Jesus sort of spills himself out in the most explicit capacity and that causes, as we'll see next week, everyone to panic. Because up until this point, everyone's been thinking, well, okay, maybe he doesn't mean it. Maybe he's being highly symbolic. Maybe this is a spiritual meal that he's going to be providing for us. But John provides for us today this, this doubling down on what Jesus is saying. And it's important to remember that um, the Gospel of John is unique because when people misunderstand what Jesus is saying in the Gospel of John, Jesus will clarify. It's an amazing little thing. For example, a few chapters back, 
when he's talking with Nicodemus about how you must be born again. And Nicodemus says, well, how are you supposed to crawl back into your mother's womb? Right? And Jesus says, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. You have to be born from water and the Spirit, right? Or when Jesus says, I am the gate later on. Jesus does this all the time where people go, I don't understand what you're meaning. You're not actually a door or gate. That's not what I mean. You're not supposed to be crawling in my mother's womb. No, that's not what I mean. When people misunderstand, in John's gospel, he clarifies. But when he asks to be taken literally, he doubles down. He is emphatic. He doesn't budge. He just keeps drilling down to his point, and that's what happens here this morning. On the first two occasions this morning in the verses where Jesus says, eat my flesh, drink my blood, he uses the Greek word for eat. That's it. It's phago. It's Greek for to eat. He just says eat. And they start saying, well, how can that be? So Jesus goes at them again. And he says four times in a row, the thing he just said, but he intensifies his language. He no longer is using the word phago, which means to eat. Now he's using the word trago, Greek for to gnaw or to munch. It's the word they would use for an animal picking apart a piece of meat. And he uses that verb and then he uses it again, and then he uses it again, and then he uses it again. It's Jesus just keeps hitting the raw nerve, saying, what I am telling you, you need to start grasping, because this is real. And what we'll see next week is that it causes everyone to abandon him. If Jesus wanted to clarify this point, this is a spiritual meal, you're misunderstanding, he would do it as he's done throughout the other places in John's gospel. He doesn't hear. In fact, it's so scandalous, everyone understands what Jesus is saying, and so they leave him. So when we're asked to actually consume the body and blood of Christ, We mean it as Catholics. Why? Because Jesus means it. And what is this meal that's given to us? It's not simply the the flesh and blood of this man. It's God. That's part of the, the scandal of all this. It's God telling us, I am going to give myself to you. I'm going to lower myself so that you can have me in the palm of your hand. That's part of the wonder of all this. What makes everyone skeptical is God saying, I'm going to lower myself, make myself so small that you can actually take me into yourself. But Jesus says, if this doesn't happen, You do not have life within you, which makes sense. It's life himself saying, take me into yourself. Take me into yourself and live forever. Take me into yourself and be one with me. That's the gift of the Eucharist. That's why Catholics say this is a non-negotiable meal. This has to happen in our life. Both the first reading today from Proverbs and Paul's letter to the Ephesians invite us to forsake foolishness and to become a wise people. Forsake foolishness and become wise. The author of Proverbs tells us, a meal is being prepared for us. A meal is being prepared for us. Stop wandering around, scrounging around, trying to find something else that will provide you with life. Dispense with that. Come to the author of life. Receive life itself.
It's here free for the taking. Catholics, you and I have this. You and I have this. And it's a meal that we invite others to partake in and to know about. Why? Because this is the intention of Jesus. If you're paying attention, you cannot dismiss it. It is not something to ignore. It's not something to dilute or downplay. It's non-negotiable. Take this meal. So, brothers and sisters, we have one week left in the sixth chapter of John. And we're going to find how divisive this teaching is, this thing that Jesus is offering next week. Everything that Jesus has built up to this point is going to fall apart next week just because he has been making this point of the gift of his life for us. May you and I track Jesus' intention here of what he wants to give us and why he wants to give it to us. Because for us, it not only is life eternal, but it's meant to be life eternal for the entire world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, heaven. and by the by Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit was incarnate, incarnate of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary and became, and became man. man. For, for our, our sake he was crucified under Pontius, Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered death and was buried and, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right, right hand, hand of the, the Father. Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that the Father always hears our prayers, we offer our needs and intentions. For the church in this year of prayer, that we would receive in prayer what we need to cooperate with God's intention for our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for our second collection this weekend, for the Diocesan Life and Justice Campaign, that our support might empower local organizations to defend the dignity of the person and the sanctity of human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our <clears throat> prayer. For the students, faculty, and staff of our school as they begin the school year this week, that God would bless them and equip them to live their faith in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all seminarians as they return to their studies, that God may grant them the grace and wisdom they need to live their vocation with conviction and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for the everlasting joy and peace of the faithful departed, including Carol Hoover. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intentions we bring to Mass, including this Mass is offered for Mary Kate Hughes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer a prayer of thanksgiving for Henry Miller Witt, who will be baptized into the life of Jesus this morning. We pray that Henry may grow to glorify God with his life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, hear and answer these prayers according to your will. Grant us graces that we might be renewed in our commitment and our love for the holy meal that your Son has given us, his very flesh, his very blood, so that we might have life eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of this holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the in highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and, and drink, drink this, this cup, cup we, we proclaim, proclaim your death, death O Lord, Lord until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas More and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the, the sins, sins of the world. Of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. Of the world. Grant, Grant us, us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter, enter under my, my roof, but only, but only say, say the, the word, word and my soul shall be healed. healed.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Word of welcome to visitors and parishioners who are back with us after an extended absence. In three weeks, an 11-week series on the Ten Commandments begins, sponsored by the Knights of Columbus. School of Religion classes for our homeschooled and public school families meet Wednesday evenings beginning September 11th. Sessions for those considering becoming Catholic meet Tuesday evenings beginning September 10th. This Friday, Fresh Fire, our evenings of Eucharistic adoration, worship, prayer teams, and testimony begin the first of four fall offerings. This Thursday, Moore Friends, our 55 and over ministry, holds a potluck and bingo in Moore Hall. This Tuesday begins the academic year at STM School. A reminder to please show caution when driving on the property, especially around drop-off and pickup times on school days. Advertising space is available in our gym for the 2024-25 school year, benefiting STM Booster Club. Eucharistic Adoration is held in the church today following the 11 o'clock Mass until 9 p.m. Details on any of these events can be found in our bulletin, website, weekly email blast, or by scanning the QR code in your pews. The Lord be with you. For spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>